these are vintage miter boxes. They belong to my wife's grandfather, and then he passed them to his son, who passed them to me. I will keep them in my charge until my son is old enough to care for them, and then I shall pass them to him. That is the durability of vintage. Now, miter boxes are not so popular anymore with the introduction of miter saws, and why not? Miter saws are a handy dandy tool to have in any workshop. They make short work of cutting multiple boards to length, add a stop block system, and repeatable cuts can be done as fast as you can cut. Mine is a very simple base model 10 inch version, and it gets a lot of use. However, despite its usefulness, it's still not one of those tools that I consider to be a must have when you're first starting out a workshop. Anything the miter saw can do, you can do elsewhere on other things. In fact, when I first started doing DIY, I used a very simple version of a miter box that I made myself. Now you can buy these. They come in a plastic version or a wooden version as you see here. These happen to be made out of rock maple and you can see that they've had some use. One more than the other. It only takes about 15 to 20 minutes to make your own and it's fairly accurate as well. So going over to my scrap bin and digging around in it for a while, I came up with a few choices. Any of these would work. These two pieces would do, although I like to have my sides a little taller than what this one piece would allow. Now, preferably, I would want to use a hardwood such as a maple or oak like I have here. However, this is all I could find of oak in my scrap bin and I'm not gonna go out and buy oak just for this demonstration. So that leaves me with a couple of pieces of white wood or SPF as it's called. I find this type of pine to be a little bit more stable so I'm gonna go with this. So I've got my router table set up with a router bit and I'm gonna route a single three quarter inch dado. now. This is not necessary. You could use pocket holes to join the two pieces, but I like to keep things as cheap as possible. And since screws cost money, I'm using a dado instead. All right, so after test fitting, I can go ahead and glue those two pieces together. Just make sure they're 90 degrees to each other. I'm using a right angle clamp just to make sure of that. That dado allowed for a slight lip on the underside of the box. That is so that I can clamp my miter box in my bench vise. So if you're using pocket holes, just make sure you have about a quarter of an inch lip for that reason. Now I can take a combination square and with a knife, scribe one 45 degree mark. Flip the combination square over and scribe a second 45 degree mark in the opposite direction. And you're going to want to press kind of hard when you're scribing the mark because you want that knife wall to go fairly deep. Then a 90 degree mark as well. So since the autofocus on my camera wanted to play games, here is actually a closer look for it. The pencil marks are only so you can see them more clearly. That is it. Now I'll take a chisel and hash out a piece of material from the side down to the knife wall. And do that on all three marks. That creates a wall that I can set my back saw against to help me make a straight on cut. Now when you're first starting this cut out, you don't want to press down really. Just let the weight of the saw be your downward force until you get things rolling. The reason I left the side of my miter box so tall is so that it can accommodate different widths of board. I'm not putting a second side on and traditionally that second side would be used to help keep your saw straight on in the cut. But it gets tricky when your board width is wider than the box side wall. So when I make my boxes, I make sure that my side wall is as tall as the majority of the pieces I think I'm going to be dealing with. Now, if all you're doing is carpentry and you're gonna be dealing with molding, that has a pretty standard width and you may not have to worry about different sizes of boards. However, I don't do just carpentry, I am a woodworker and so I'm dealing with all sorts of different types of material. So when building them like this, all I have to do is place a sacrificial bed underneath my workpiece when I'm dealing with a board that's not as wide. Clamp the board in place and to do a mitered corner joint, I just make the first cut using one of the 45 degree kerfs. For the mating piece, I simply use the other 45 degree. And there is my miter joint. Looks pretty good. Now, as I said earlier, obviously because of miter saws, miter boxes, 
are not as commonplace anymore. But here in Florida, we get hurricanes, and when we do, we're without power for who knows how long. And it is good to be able to know how to make and use things like this because sometimes repairs can't wait for power to come back on. Hey, thanks for watching. Since you made it this far, go ahead and hit the like or dislike button down below. Either one is good to go. Visit my website, simplyeasydiy.com, for all sorts of projects to help you out around the house. And don't forget to check me out on Facebook and Pinterest. Until then.